Jai Hind to all students and their parents as well. Welcome to the online classes of Sri Ram Public School held on my account, which is I learn from YouTube. So, the last time what we studied is the sentence, right? The chapter, the first one. So today it's your second class, and then uh, let's see. Let's, let's just take a recap of what we already know about the sentence. Okay. So the first thing that we know about sentence is that it has to be clear, understandable, and it has to make sense, right? In a common way, in a, I mean in a normal way, it has to make sense. And it has to fulfill certain criteria to be considered as a sentence. So let's uh, recap one, once again what we did earlier, and then we can move forward. So this is what we did, the first point is subject is divided into two parts. The first one, sorry, the sentence is divided into two parts. Is the subject and the predicate, right? We have the, you know, we have done this before. I'm just doing this so that uh, I can refresh your memories on what the last class was about. So yeah, get back to it, subject and predicate. So what is the subject? The subject in the sentence is part of the sentence which tells us about the person or the thing right whatever he or she or whatever it is doing so the subject is someone who's doing something or who we are referring to all right then there might be a man sitting over in a corner of the street doing nothing okay so if someone's doing nothing that doesn't mean that we it's not you know, it's not a verb. He is still sitting down, right? That's also a verb, sitting. It's an act. So that's simple to identify. So what, when it comes about subject, we say that subject. OK, now moving on to the next aspect of sentences. So next we are talking about the kinds of sentences. What are the kind of sentences? There are four kinds of sentences divided into four the first one is assertive sentence second one interrogative third one imperative and the last one will be exclamatory okay so these are the types of sentences, assertive, interrogative, imperative, and exclamatory. Mm, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's exclamatory, okay? Assertive, interrogative, imperative, uh, imperative and exclamatory. You can find it in your book here for class seven students. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one is assertive. The meaning of the word assertive sentence, or sorry, the meaning of the word assertive is, it's like giving a positive sign, yes. Okay, I agree to you, I confirm, kind of like that. All right. Assertive sentences say, uh, state something and they end with a full stop. An assertive sentence can be positive or negative. Now, when it becomes positive or negative, uh, we'll talk about that with few examples. Now, let's take a look at this example. The first one, the books are new. Subject, we're talking, sorry, these books are new. Subject, the books. In this case, also subject, the books. Okay, yeah, so with that being said, these books are new. It is positive and these books are not new that is negative because we are using here the word not and the word not is considered to be a negative word here we don't have that that is why it's positive so assertive sentence can state something and they always end up with a full stop like these books are new these books are non-new 
another example will be you can't ask any questions the, uh, that's negative assertive sentence you can go to the washroom that is positive assertive sentence so it should be clear no confusion number one assertive sentences type in the types of sentences number one is the assertive type of uh, uh, sentences sorry and then in this uh, kind of sentences there are positive and negative but they always end up with a full stop or period or dot okay so plus one means it is saying kind of like saying yes okay in assertive and positive sentence the key the sentence like okay these books are new we already got it so he has got a car he doesn't have a car so the first one he has got a car there is no negative signal anywhere so that's why we can say that yes this is a positive assertive sentence he does not have a car he doesn't have a car this sentence is okay this sentence is negative assertive sentence negative because we are we can see the use of the word not he doesn't have a car that means it's a negative imperative sentence the second type is interrogative sentence so what happens in these kind of uh, sentences are the interrogative the word itself means asking questions finding data through questioning that is what is called interrogation so interrogative sentences are those that end up with a question mark when you are asking for something all right for example um, okay no no not this one not when you are asking for something this question mark can be used in simple examples like here uh, for the first one that I said do you go to the gym do you go to the gym a simple sentence right okay let's uh, do the subject verb also uh, subject uh, verb argument and then let's also do subject and predicate so let's what is the subject here do you go to the gym the subject here is you and go to the gym is the predicate easy we have done that before and we'll keep doing on it keep on it no mistakes start with the positive uh, i mean capital letter and with full stop question mark or an exclamation mark yeah so moving forward with sentences and these kinds of sentences interrogative sentence means the sentence is asking a question here the sentence is do you go to the gym question mark because it's interrogative interrogation asking people all right to get something in knowledge yes questions and wh questions yes questions are simple kind of questions do you like to read this kind of sentence or so yeah this in this kind of sentence there's a positive response yes or a negative response no so what do i mean by this kind of sentence which star uh, sorry what do i mean by sentences with yes or no do you like to read yes or no this sentence directly has yes or no answer so that is sufficient nothing more no, sorry nothing more to say do you like to read no do you like to read yes sufficient 
yeah it makes sense obviously it makes sense the answer it makes sense of of course okay so let's uh, take a look uh, at the example with wh1 wh questions like why what because it's interrogative and interrogation so always it's ends up with question mark wh type of question is when did you come here you can see i've used wh so this one is okay so this one is wh kind of sentence right here when did you come or where did you go or what are you doing all have interrogation or uh, sorry into a question mark at the end so we can say that this is an interrogative sentence now moving on we have imperative sentence imperative sentences are those sentences which give orders advice commands or make request okay so this type of sentence imperative sentence what it will do is orders advice commands or make request when you are ordering something when you are getting an advice or giving an advice when you are commanding someone commanding someone to exactly do this do that okay generally like how a police commands someone let's say some a criminal so if police catches a criminal in the middle of the street the police can say raise your hands where i can see them raise your hands where i can see them and get out of your car the police can say that that's an order or a command that means he has to get out of the car there is no other options so you can you can say that it's a command type so in advice type uh, what you can say is mm, your doctor okay your doctor might say avoid eating junk food it's not good for you try to have uh, more fruits and vegetables it's a piece of advice from the doctor so that is imperative when you are making requests may i drink water now what does it mean we have may i drink water question mark here we have what we call remember before this before imperative we did interrogative because it has a question mark at the end all right so in imperative making request also may i drink water question mark this can be imperative because i am making a request may i drink water that's a question also so interrogation here and making requests in uh, imperative may i when you when you see these words may i that means you are talking about imperative sentences because you are making a request may i okay so let's move on to the last one exclamatory sentences now exclamatory sentence what uh, what it means expresses sudden or strong feelings of joy sorrow surprise etc so what is an exclamatory sentence when someone tells you to do something walk really fast okay and other one please 
do not touch. So these you can see in almost every place you visit, like which is a museum or which stores artifacts and everything. Obviously, it will be precious. So you can see some signs say, please do not touch. Walk really fast. So you can see, notice that I didn't end up with exclamation mark here and I didn't uh, end up with exclamation, exclamation mark here also. But is it a proper sentence? Let's go to that first. Please do not touch. Of course, it's a proper sentence. Walk really fast. It is also a perfect sentence because it's making sense and it has subject, predicate, everything. It is making sense. So how we can say that these are exclamatory sentences? When we change the tone of it, okay? Walk really fast, exclamation. Please do not touch, exclamation. Now both these sentences are still correct. Now it became exclamatory because we have exclamation mark here and here. Please do not touch, exclamation. Walk really fast, exclamation. So uh, let's take a look at the example from the book here. What a beautiful scene it is. It's a surprise. Pure Indian team won the match, expressing joy. Alas, she lost her bag, exclamation mark, sorrow. So exclamation mark here is denoting her pain that she lost her bag. Here, here it's denoting the winning one, winning. The zeal, the zigger, vigor of what you know, uh, after someone wins something, the triumphant kind of feeling that is called um, zeal or vigor. And then here they are expressing that in the form of joy, surprise. Okay, what a beautiful day it is, what a beautiful scene it is, what a beautiful car you have, what a beautiful, okay, what a beautiful bike or whatever you have, what a beautiful bag you have whatever you say, uh, it's kind of an element of surprise. So that is why we are using exclamation mark here. Understood? I hope you do. If you don't, then we, it's always, you can always tell me in the online sessions afternoon. Um, okay. Now, before we take the next point let us just see what we have got for homework so both students of class 7th and class 8th are supposed to complete your homework entire first chapter both the classes and you need to do it ASAP as soon as possible okay there's not much more here Okay, now um, further, uh, the students of class 8, please focus. The, uh, the students of class 7, you are requested to do all the homework, complete it in your book with a pencil. All right, don't use a pen and don't mark anything. Use a pencil and then write all the answers. So continuing, yeah, with class 8. So we already talked about subject and predicate in a sentence, right? So going further into that, a subject may consist of one or more than one word. Examples, the girls are dancing, the girls in blue dresses are the winners, the girls, that means more than one. If it was the girl is dancing, then it would be singular, here also, the girl in blue dress is the winner if it was like that it would be one so more than one the girls in blue dresses one two three four five five words here we have girls the girls are dancing two words 
so the subject can constitute one word or more than one word okay example okay as the subject can be of more than one word in the same way the predicate can also be of more than one word sita sings well he ran all the way two uh, sorry two words here we have four that means predicate also can have more than one word sings well is a predicate here while sita is the subject here he is the subject ran all the way it is the predicate some verbs have objects while others don't and the uh, the verbs which have objects are called transitive verbs and the verbs which do not have objects are called intransitive verbs okay you'll understand with the help of example okay now let's see number one children fly kites birds fly in the first example the verb fly has an object that is kites here subject is the children the children are flying the kites in the very first example the word uh, sorry the verb fly has an object that is kites fly is a verb kites is a uh, sorry kites is the object in this sentence and children these are uh, these are the subjects sorry kite uh, children are the subject kite object and fly verb this is subject verb agreement okay so yeah back in the first example the fly uh, the verb fly has one object that is kites here so children fly kites here we don't have one we just have birds fly the verb fly does not have any object here the object is missing so when there is no object or the object is missing we can call this intransitive verb or we can call this this one we can all right uh, this one we can call transitive verbs and this one intransitive because this one has an object but this one doesn't still this is a proper sentence birds fly yeah and what are we talking about subject we have birds we don't have an object we don't have an object we just have birds subject fly predicate as simple as that and this is a verb now that's also are of two types object direct object and indirect object when we are talking about objects here kites is the object verb is fly so just like that direct object the object that denotes what is done said or given to the person is called the direct object the object that denotes the person for whom something is done or to whom something is said or given is called the indirect object so it's it will be clear don't worry object that denotes what is said sorry what is done said or given to the person is called direct object done said or given to the person the object that denotes the person for whom something is done or to whom something is said or given is called the indirect object let's uh, let's make it clear with an example harris got a gift on diwali my friend gave me a gift on my birthday in the first example the sentence has only one object a gift here that is a direct object harris got a gift on diwali the second uh, second example the sentence has two objects the first object me is indirect as it talk uh, talks about a person to whom something is given the second object is a gift 
because it is uh, so it is direct as it shows what is given to the person so here direct object and indirect object first one a gift it is definitely clear that uh, it's indirect as it talks about a person to whom something is being done my friend gave me a gift on diwali the second object gift is direct as it shows what is given to the person understood and here the indirect object can come after the direct object in a sentence but we use to before the indirect object in such case my friend gave a gift to me on my birthday sometimes we need a wrong a uh, so word or a group of words to complete the uh, sense of the object in a sentence some words are called object complements example the principal made rohit captain this is also a compliment right the principal made rohit captain what is being done making a captain who is doing that the principal to whom to rohit everyone proved him guilty who did it everyone did what prove him guilty so here in the above examples the highlighted words are the object complements without these complements the meaning of the objects rohi and him is incomplete so when if i say the principal made rohit it will not make sense it will not be a complete sentence everyone proved him proved him what proved him guilty so you can see these all this marked okay captain guilty object complements rohit and him here highlighted words are object complements because it is associating it is complimenting everyone proved him guilty the principal made rohit captain there is a gesture being made something is being done here also there is a gesture being made something is being done everyone is proving him guilty principal sir is making rohit the captain of the school so this is how it does so how it goes in that regard types of sentences we have already done so i need you to do this uh, 1.1 clear it out clear this one also this one too will be your homework so the entire chapter it's over so that's your homework for class 8 students as well rest we will discuss in the doubt clearing sessions in the afternoon in the evening time sorry so yeah that's it for today uh, we'll come back later with another chapter and then we can discuss that in the afternoon evening sessions okay so that's it for today have a good day and just take care of yourself jai hind and goodbye